Masks are the foundation for a lot of things in retouching and getting non-destructive workflows. I use masks in literally every edit that I do, so it's really important to have an understanding of masks because you will use them a lot with your edits. So what exactly is a mask? A mask is a tool in photography that allows you to show only certain parts of an image, layer, or adjustment. You can kind of think about it as like you're cutting something out just like you would in arts and crafts. So now inside Affinity Photo, all I have is a landscape image here, and then just above the landscape image, I just have a pixel layer that is filled in with blue. So in order to use a mask inside Affinity Photo, all you have to do is select the layer that you want to apply your mask to, come down to your layers panel, and just hit mask layer. And that will apply a mask to that layer. And so now with our mask selected, to actually use the mask, all we have to do is come over and hit our paintbrush tool, or you can hit B on your keyboard. And so now essentially with this, anything that we paint onto our mask layer with black is going to hide that layer. Anything that we paint on with white is going to show parts of that layer. And anything in between, so essentially any parts of the gray, is going to show different opacities of that layer. So as you can see here, we kind of have like a middle gray, so it's going to show at about half opacity. Also with this, since we're using our brush tool to paint on this mask, we can actually use the tools of the paintbrush to affect how our mask is going to look as well. So for example, we can bring our hardness down if we want more of a softer brush, like so. I'm going to change my color back to white for this, and change that back to black. So now as you can see, we have a softer edge of the parts we're painting out. We could also adjust things like the flow or opacity. Adjusting the opacity would essentially just be the same way as painting on with something like gray. So as you can see here, once we paint on, we're only getting about 45% opacity. I'm just going to bring that back up. Or we can use the flow, which is essentially going to do the same thing, but it allows us to paint back over certain parts if we want to have the effect a little bit stronger. So for example, as you can see, the more I paint over this part here, the more it's going to show through, as opposed to the bottom part here where we only did one stroke. So the more strokes you go over with it, the more it will show through. Whereas opacity, whatever opacity you set it at, that's what it's going to stay at. So no matter how much I paint over this, it's going to stay at 44% opacity. And with the paintbrush tool as well, you can of course change your brushes over here. So if you want to change the brush to something a little bit fancier, you can go ahead and paint on with that as well. And of course, as always, you can always change your width or you can use your bracket keys on your keyboard to adjust it a little bit easier. So now I'm actually just going to delete this mask real quick. And real quick, I wanted to show you guys that if you ever need to start with a mask that is painted all black so it hides the entire layer, all you have to do is hold down Alt or Option when you click on that mask layer, and that will create an all black mask layer so that now we can come back and paint on. And that's just so that you don't have to, you know, come in here and then paint over everything just to paint it back over again. It just saves you a little bit of time. So now let's say you've done some stuff in the mask and you realize that you actually need to invert the mask. So you want to hide the parts that are white and show the parts that are black. All you have to do is with your mask selected, hit Control or Command I, and that will just invert your mask. And now another cool thing about masks is that because they are basically just a black and white layer, you can add other filters and stuff to them to adjust them. So for example, we can actually add something like a Gaussian blur to this mask if we wanted to blur out our mask a little bit. We can apply that, and that will add some blur to our mask. And like I said, you could go through pretty much just about any of these filters and adjust your mask however you'd like. So now I hope you're seeing that masks are awesome and can be super useful, but I know some of you are thinking that we have these options with the eraser tool. Why don't we just use the eraser tool? And the reason we use masks instead of the eraser tool is because of something called a non-destructive workflow. So to demonstrate this, I actually have a photo over here of a person, and so Let's say that we wanted to cut out our subject here. And I'm just going to duplicate the layer by hitting Control or Command J before we move on. So now let's say we wanted to cut out our subject here, and we want to do it the handheld way. So with this, I'm just going to hide that background layer. So now with our eraser tool selected over here, we can start, you know, cutting her out from the background. And I'm just going to do this very loosely. Just go through with this. And we'll just call that good for right now. So now that we've had our subject cut out, let's say we went on with our edit. You know, we started adding a bunch of different, you know, adjustment layers to this, and we did a bunch of different things. 
And now let's say we've done a bunch of different edits to our photo and we realize, oh no, I have to go back and show a certain part of that background. And so now if we had to come back, there's essentially no way to show that background again because the eraser tool is destructive, which basically just means that there's no way to go back and change what you've done. But instead, if we were to use a mask on this, I'm just going to delete all these adjustment layers and we will add a mask to our layer here and then use our paintbrush tool. I'm just gonna reduce the hardness down. And so now with our paintbrush tool, we will just do the same thing that we did with the eraser tool and just very quickly mask her out. So let's say we have something like that. And then just like with the eraser tool, we go ahead and we add all these sorts of different edits to everything. And now that we've done all these edits, let's say, oh no, we have to go back and change something with our mask. Well, because that we used a mask, we can just come over here and with our mask selected, we'll select our paintbrush tool and make sure that we're painting on with white to show we can bring back certain parts of that background. And so this allows us to have a non-destructive workflow, which just means that we are allowed to go back and change things whenever we seem fit. Because this way you don't have to undo all of your progress and go back and change everything with the eraser. Because this way we don't have to undo everything that we did in order to get back to the eraser tool. This way we can just paint on with white or black or whatever we need to show or hide certain parts of that layer. Basically, whenever you're editing a photo, you always want to strive for a non-destructive workflow and using masks is just one of the best ways of doing that. So now I want to show you some practical examples of actually using a mask in your edits. One of the things I use masks most in is going to be something like doing dodge and burn or darkening or lightening certain parts of an image. So for example with this is if we add in a curves adjustment layer and then let's say we really brighten parts of the image here. You can see it already has added a mask for us. And so all I'm going to do with this is hit Control or Command I to invert that mask so none of that curves layer is now showing. And then I can grab my paintbrush tool by hitting B. I'll reduce my brush size a little bit. I'll come in here and change my hardness real quick. And then if we start painting over parts of the image with white, you can see we're going to lighten parts of the image. So for example, let's say we wanted to really brighten up her eyes really quick. What we can do is brighten those parts of the eye. And so now she basically has glowing eyes. But now this is basically just a practical example of a way that I would use masks inside a photo. Obviously this looks kind of bad. If you guys are interested, I actually do have a tutorial on how to retouch eyes. If you guys want to go a little bit further in depth in how to retouch eyes using adjustment layers and masks. But now real quick moving on, if you guys have ever worked inside of Photoshop, you might be aware of something called clipping masks, which is basically a way to apply something like an adjustment to only one layer instead of all of the layers below it. So by that, I mean, is if we were to apply an adjustment layer and just change the settings really quick, this adjustment layer is going to apply to every layer below it. So if we only had certain parts of this image showing, like this, that curves adjustment is still being applied to this background layer as well. So as you can see, it's being applied to the entire image. Now in Photoshop, we could apply a clipping mask to this curves adjustment, which basically would mean it would only apply to this first layer below it here and not the background layer. But as you can see, there's no such option inside Affinity Photo. But thankfully, it's really easy to get the same effect. All we have to do is bring this curves adjustment into the group of that top layer there. And so now, as you can see, it's only being applied to that layer instead of our background layer as well. Now, one last tip I'm gonna leave you with is when you're using masks, especially in things like retouching portraits, you wanna make sure that your hardness is gonna be really low or you at least feather your edges of your mask. Like I showed earlier, you can always come up into blur and then Gaussian blur to blur your masks. But the reason for this is it just makes blending things a whole lot easier. So just like in this photo here, when we applied the effect to her eyes, we had a pretty low hardness. But an example of using something like a hard brush like this is it's not going to show up quite as well because you're going to be able to see the edges there as opposed to this side. It essentially just makes blending things a whole lot easier, especially in retouching. So don't be afraid to feather your masks at all. You're going to be using it a lot. But that pretty much does it for this video. If you guys want to take your masking skills to the next level, I'll leave a couple videos that I've done 
that will show you a little bit more practical examples of using masks inside Affinity Photo. But if you guys have anything you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I hope you guys have a great day. See ya.